Cyprus is nearly broke, and the social fabric is beginning to tear. It's rare in actually world history to find a national stock market that is down 98% from its previous peak. Lawmakers had to be lifted over the barricades. Not too long ago in 2013, the small country of Cyprus was in a real economic jumble. Financial experts have predicted its downfall as one of the world's international business centers. But today, none of those predictions have actually come true. In fact, the island country known as the Jewel of the Mediterranean and legendary birthplace of the goddess Aphrodite is presently not only a major tourist destination in the Mediterranean, but it also boasts of an advanced high-income economy with a very high human development index. There's no unsustainable credit expansion now. I mean, the banking sector operates uh, on a much healthier footing. Cyprus has one of the most bustling economies of the world, and it is constantly and rapidly expanding. Curious to see why that is? Today, we'll be taking a closer look at how, in spite of all the odds, Cyprus has ensured the stability and even growth of its economy over time. So sit back, relax, and listen up as I explain to you just how fascinating the economy of Cyprus is. This is Business Explained. To learn more about all things money, get educated about how to do business, become business savvy, and enjoy more videos like these, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell, and may you be granted with many, many sweet returns. Divide your time between the island's rich cultural history and beaches so beautiful you'll be hard-pressed to find their equal anywhere. Cyprus is a divided country due to the War of 1974. One country, two sides, three exclaves, four people groups, and a lot of confusing lines that can give even the most seasoned Uber driver a level 5 seizure. Welcome to Cyprus. Cyprus is located south of Turkey and southeast of Greece. In 2004, they joined the European Union and they adopted the euro as their currency in 2008. Given its ideal geographic location, Cyprus promotes itself as the business gateway between Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. Its people are highly educated and its population English-speaking. Since its independence in 1960, Cyprus has experienced so many setbacks, from coups to invasions to huge debt acquired by major banks. It's like Cyprus has been through it all. Ironically, both sides welcomed the soldiers, brothers in arms of many who had been killed in the troubled times before the island became independent. However, each setback was met with astonishing recoveries that exceeded expectations. Both enjoyed its biggest day for a long time. General Grivas, here with President Makarios, was back in the island. In 1960, Cyprus had just gained independence from the United Kingdom and was facing a number of structural issues. Agriculture, the dominant sector at the time, was plagued with erratic weather conditions and low productivity from its workers. The manufacturing sector was limited to small firms producing specialized handicrafts. In addition to that, the country's infrastructure was not up to par with the world's standards, and only a few hill resorts were available to cater to tourists. Without many natural resources, export was mainly dependent on agriculture and minerals. Has the island of hate become Aphrodite's island of love once more? Here you find contrasts, contradictions sophistication alongside simplicity. Naturally, economic reforms had to be made. The government, under the direction of the Planning Bureau of the Ministry of Finance, set to work by adopting a system of economic planning and goal setting. To encourage and support the private sector, legislation and monetary and fiscal policies were implemented. The state also prioritized improving the country's physical and institutional infrastructure, believing that such improvements would allow the private sector to function well with minimal government participation. With expert advice from abroad, the Bureau came up with three five-year economic development plans. The first five-year plan was set into action from 1962 to 1966, with the aims of achieving higher incomes, full employment, price stability, and improving the balance of payments, and attaining greater economic equality between rural and urban areas. The plan focused on development projects for infrastructure like roads, ports, airport facilities, irrigation projects, and telecommunications and electricity systems. 
During this period, the Agricultural Research Institute was established, improving the quality of agriculture, and the Central Bank of Cyprus created to ensure credit availability for funding of the private sector. They've grown olives and all sorts of fruit in Cyprus for longer than anyone has written harsh history. Though last year the crops were unpicked because of fighting in many of these groves near Kyrenia, the Cyprus port just 41 miles away from the Turkish shore. Having laid the fundamental groundwork with the initial plan, the second plan implemented from 1967 to 1971 sought to provide the social and legal structure that were needed by a more complex economy. In this period, the business community was also given a more active role in planning. In a third five-year plan dating 1972 to 1976, the focus was on regional planning with aims to promote more even economic growth throughout the country. Emphasis was also placed on social and cultural aspects of development. In this period, the Cyprus Development Bank was established to provide medium and long-term loans for development projects as well as technical and administrative assistance. Institutions such as the Higher Technical Institute and the Hotel and Catering Institute were also established to provide specialized training. Over the course of 14 years, these three five-year plans proved to be a success by the resulting growth of the Cypriot economy. Though the agriculture sector made great improvements, it no longer was a dominant sector. In fact, the secondary and tertiary sectors had become even more productive as Cyprus became a much more developed nation. However, Cyprus's economic growth did not come without its own set of hurdles. Soon there were 200 demonstrators on the Greek side, facing 500 on the Turkish side, and the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. In 1974, the Cypriot economy took a hit when the Turks invaded and occupied 37% of the northern part of the island. The country was faced with problems including a large number of refugees, splitting of the island's market, and the loss of the government-controlled area containing valuable resources. Cyprus yet again devised four emergency economic plans, the first three implemented in two-year increments, while the fourth plan was carried out in a span of four years. From 1975 to 1978, the first two emergency action plans were carried out. Its main efforts focused on aiding refugees and establishing a housing program for them. Additionally, more fiscal and monetary policies were adopted. These efforts proved to be a success, with the economy expanding by about 6% per year, and unemployment rates declining to about 2% in 1978. However, increased consumption and rising oil prices caused the inflation rate to reach 7.4% in 1978. Despite this, with the state's success in housing the refugees and getting the economy going again in such a short period of time, with even less resources than in their independence in 1960, Cyprus proved its astonishing ability to bounce back. The third of these two-year emergency plans focused mainly on countering the increase of inflation by implementing a restrictive monetary policy, a policy in which the amount of money and credit the bank can lend is restricted. Lastly, the fourth emergency economic action plan, which covered 1982 to 1986, focused its efforts in balancing economic expansion with monetary stability. By then, the heat had gone out of the Cold War, and tension between the Cypriot communities was on the back burner. Consequently, the emphasis in this film, at least, was on the positives of deploying to the eastern Mediterranean. The efforts proved successful, and retail price inflation went down while sustaining high growth rates and low unemployment. Throughout the 90s, fluctuating growth rates were the result of fluctuating tourist activity due to the tense political atmosphere brought about by the Turkish invasion, as well as the unstable economic conditions that were presented all throughout Western Europe. But in 2001, the Cypriot economy was included by the International Monetary Fund. The most recent hit taken by the Cypriot economy was in 2012 to 2013, known as the Cypriot financial crisis. Global worries stemming from that financial crisis in the Mediterranean nation of Cyprus. Now it has stocks sliding across Asia this morning, and it was a major reason for the Dow's 90-point skid yesterday. ABC's Nick Schifrin is in Cyprus, where worry and anger is rampant. Due to bad investments made by Cyprus's top bank into debt-burdened Greece, the country was plunged into a severe economic crisis. Cyprus' biggest banks were among the largest holders of Greek bonds in Europe, and had a substantial presence in Greece through bank branches and subsidiaries. Cyprus is broke. The banks are failing. Bank accounts are being raided. People's savings are being seized. Not a bailout, but a bail-in. 
with bank customers bearing the burden. On March 25, 2013, Cyprus requested a 10 billion euro financial assistance package from the European Troika, which comprises the European Commission, the European Central Bank and the International Monetary Fund. We feel we are being used as a guinea pig here. They, they want to see, Europe wants to see if this will work, and then they can do it in another place. They said this has happened once, it may happen again. Since the initial crisis, the Cyprus government has focused on restructuring the economy and restoring the credibility of Cyprus's banks. While Brussels said that they will do anything to prevent people from feeling the consequences of the bailout, austerity measures and tax increases are expected. Cyprus made a swift recovery and in 2016 exited its financial assistance program having only borrowed a total of 7.2 billion euros out of available 10 billion owing to the Cypriot government's better than expected management of finances over the course of the program. However, they are still burdened by a high number of non-performing loans. Bank loans wherein more than 90 days pass without the borrower paying the agreed installments or interests. Non-paying loans are considered as bad debts or an expense incurred once the repayment of credit previously extended to the customer is deemed to be uncollectible. Since the initial crisis, the Cyprus government has focused on restructuring the economy and restoring the credibility of Cyprus's banks, receiving positive appraisals by the European Troika, and has outperformed fiscal targets but still struggles with overcoming political opposition to bail out mandated legislation. The burden of Cypriot banks now lies in the resolution of NPLs. Did Cyprus miraculously bounce back from such a severe setback? The Cypriot economy definitely exceeds expectations once more in its ability to bounce back. In 2018, the economy regained investment-grade status. Amazing, wasn't it? Presently, the area of Republic of Cyprus under government control has an open, free market economy, with a much focus on the service sector which comprises more than four-fifths their GDP. Their most important services include tourism, finance, professional services, education, ICT, real estate, and shipping. In fact, Cyprus has a third largest fleet in Europe and 11th largest in the world. It is also one of the EU's largest shipment management center. Sounds promising? It is. But even more promising is the prospect of a new energy resource in its waters. One of the most exciting things awaiting Cyprus is the discovery of a new energy resource in its exclusive economic zone. In 2013, preliminary appraisals of hydrocarbon deposits were completed, which estimate gross means reserve of about 130 billion cubic meters. In fact, Cyprus promisingly aims to be the regional energy hub. New exciting projects such as luxury casino resorts are also piquing the interest of foreign investors, urging them to invest in Cyprus and see all that it has to offer. Cyprus is indeed an attractive marketplace for global expansion. It has shown a steady record of stability and growth, even with all the major setbacks it experienced over the past few years. Continuous expansions and exciting new developments of its tourism sector are underway. Its investments fund sector is rapidly developing, and prospects of a new energy source raise the outlook of the economy in the medium to long term perspective. Cyprus's strong business environment, educated workforce, and stable tax regime make for a dependable investment opportunity that investors surely wouldn't want to miss. What are your thoughts on the economy of Cyprus? What do you see the future has in store for the economy of Cyprus? Let me know and let's talk about it in the comment section down below. I'll be responding to all of you who comment within the first hour. Stay tuned, stay educated.